Okay, so hopefully this is the final cut. So the first cut, the problem there was that I had forgotten to mention some books. So the way I have my books stacked is that I have my library books stacked all in one pile. And if I read some books of my own like that I own, like say, oh, it's volume two, I'm gonna get volume two of a series again, which I wound up to be Young Avengers. So I read that. And then I then to make it twenty five again, like if I read if I finish two books, I wanna make it something at twenty five, no I'll Pick another one, which I, which I did this time around. Uh, there's, I'm not reviewing two books. You're not going to get a review this time of Hard Time or Before Watchmen. Um, because I haven't finished those yet. So far, so good. They're pretty good so far, both even Before Watchmen. But you'll get a full review of those two next time. Or maybe later, maybe, maybe next week. I'll do like a little, like, I could do like a um, special review. But anyways, let's get right on with it. Oh, today's video. Comic reviews of library books and then again, pretty much library books. Tomorrow, you'll see when I got for library haul, this time around. Saturday's video is going to be a comic haul, and it's one that I am very excited about, and you shall see why I'm so excited about it when that comes. And the reason why I'm not doing um, all those today is I can't. I'm waiting on two books, which I hope will come in tomorrow from uh, Amazon. And then the library, I haven't gone to the library yet, obviously, because I still have the books in, in uh, physical form. Well, I honestly wonder if one of these times I should film at the library. That'd be nice. They have, they have a little conference room. It's like, probably like per not purchase one, but probably like take like a half hour and say, hey, can I just say one busy? I want to film. It'd be nice. I won't do that one of these times. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do one of these times. I'm doing that. Call it, call it fair. All right. First up is A Map to the Sun by Sloan Leon. This is a slog to get through. It's just absolutely boring. This is the antithesis of Dragon Hoops, which ironically enough, we have a re we have a quote review from the author of Dragon Hoops, Jean Louis Yang. I feel like Sloane Leon wrote this book in her sleep. This is the in this is the definition of a book of an autopilot, no, of a book that feels like, it's, like a book that it feels a book that feels like it's on autopilot. Absolutely boring. Next up, we have. Fresh Romance. I think I said Twisted Romance by accident last time. But Fresh Romance and... This is boring too. But not as boring as was A Map to the Sun. I believe A Map to the Sun was the last book I'd read. And I had time to play finish the next two. Because again, I do the, all the OGNs at once kind of thing. But after A Map to the Sun, I'm like, no. And I took the... And then, and then I read the, the following day. Because I had Thursday to read all the other books. And I know it's really weird. But if it doesn't go by chapter, which is the one technically did... It doesn't go by chapter, I read it all at once. And that's like the first day. Cause I, like today, I would do that. I'll do that. But anyways, Fresh Romance. This wasn't as boring as um, Map to the Sun. In fact, I kind of liked the Sarah Vaughn book that was in here, which is what I came in for. So in that, we're good. But in that, in that, in that that's good. But all the other stories were just kind of eh. Even that one was kind of eh. Not, not too great. Uh, I would say if you, if you like romance books, check it out. But even then, there's got to be a thousand other romance comics you can check out that are much better. Another Castle by Andrew Wheeler. This book was absolutely stupid. This book felt like it was a lost episode from Sophia the First, the Disney Junior cartoon. I'm not exaggerating, only slightly. I haven't seen Sophia the First, fine. But that's what it felt like. It felt like, that, felt like a Disney Junior cartoon that tries a little bit harder, you know, a little harder edge, but it's still TVY for kitties and no one else. Absolutely stupid and absolutely, like, this is the antithesis of Princeless. Princeless is more mature than this book is. This book is just boring. Absolutely boring. I did not care about anything. I think it was like five issues, but I wish it was three, so I could be done with it quicker. Codename Babushka. Sometimes, you know, when there's a book that, um, sorry, I'm making sure I had all the books stacked the right way. I do. Uh, anyways, sometimes when you haven't heard of a book, especially from a, from a publisher that you have been purchasing a lot of books from, like it happened for Image, you said to yourself, well, maybe it's because this image, you know, they, they publish a lot of books. I mean, it's, it fell under radar. Maybe this will be the uh, underrated book that everyone talks about. Oh, a hidden gem, Kone Mabushka. No. No one, it's because no one cared about it, and maybe the people who read it just hated, didn't like it. I didn't hate this book, but I didn't like this book either. Will not be following, will not be buying anything else from this author. Which I think all he's done is Babushka, anyways, and even then, it's probably not on the Image Comics website. 
It's not too great. Like it's the kind of s. It's kind of the, it's as espionage. And oh, okay, who's it by? It's Aunt, Adam Adam Johnston. No, Aunt Anthony Johnston. Pretty close. Still the uh, the AJ. Still the. Uh, I'm sending him Adam Johnston from uh, YMS Movie Sucks, which is a pretty good YouTuber. And I wish I, I don't know why I'm, I don't know why I'm saying like, well, no, some of you guys haven't heard of heard of him before. I'm just saying like he's smaller than I am. No, he's like he's got like quadruple the amount of subscribers I do, and even then he's pretty small technically. And he just hit a million subscribers not too long ago. Maybe he's three million. I don't know. I don't, I don't keep track of that. Anyways, this was just boring. Not very interesting. Very by the books. Espionage, which this is kind of saying a lot because I don't, I have not read a whole lot of espionage books. I read Black Widow and that's about it, and Lazarus a long time ago. Next up, we have Rocket Girl. <sighs> Thank God it's the last volume in the series. I just hate this book. Everything about this series, I hated. I hated the characters, not like the characters themselves. I think it was boring. Characters were boring. The the uh, action was boring. This. Costume is stupid. Like even by well, this wasn't going to come out in the nineties, but even by ninety standards, people would say that this costume is dumb. Absolutely stupid. Absolutely annoying, and then like not 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 good at all. Um, the only thing I took away from this book is again, I don't, if anything, it's just forgettable. But if uh, if anything, the only thing I took away from this book was they were allowed to say the F word uncensored at least twice in a T for Teen book. That was pretty interesting, because the T for Teen, like, even Teen T Plus, like, Stock Girl by uh, Brian Lee O'Malley, it's also from Image, it was Teen Plus, and they had to censor some of the F-words, like, it was a weird kind of censoring, sometimes they'd do, like, a single dash, and, they, and then sometimes, like, an actual censoring, like, cross out, so you couldn't even tell. Like, if a T Plus book couldn't do it, at le like, it, it was, again, it was weird, like, issue one would have it censored, issue five wouldn't, issue seven, yes, it was very weird, but even then, they had to, they had to censor it, it was very odd. Next up, we have Namesake by Steve Orlando. Now, I have some, I have two sets of books I want for my birthday. Already, I know, I know, already I have a wish list. And honestly, I had, I had pretty much had it in January. Well, December, I mean, like after Christmas. Um, or well, before Christmas, because I, I got the books in my Anyways, I have two sets of books. I have a Steve Orlando and all these other controversial authors that no one likes, but I kind of like. And then I have one that I'll, I'll probably get instead. Because this book. Pretty much signifies. I was always kind of skeptical about that lot. I always had like a backup lot just in case I was like, no, I don't want to get these. And it is a kind. Of, it's also kind of a quantity over quality kind of haul too. It, it would be kind of sorta. And there's just so many things going against it, but some things going for it. And I'm like, maybe we should. So I'm very flip flops on it. But this book pretty much signified it. Like, okay, maybe we should think about getting something else because this was boring. How do you make a sci-fi book this goddamn? Boring. There's nothing in this I but I liked nothing. I can't even tell you what it's about. It's about this guy. It's his father. It's a, they're gay. One of them. Spoilers. My hands up. One of them actually isn't gay. He impregnated a woman, but the woman liked him. I think I because they impregnated the woman to get the kid. Yeah, the kid was born, and then and, and the, 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 he liked you liked the woman, and it was like a traitor kind of thing, and he was the only father alive, and now and it's so stupid. It felt like Steve Orlando had so many ideas. None of them worked at all. It was made it boring. You think it, you think it would be interesting at least? There's so much going on that you wouldn't. They would be interested at least. You know, one thing for the interested in, and like oh, so much of this, and then they are you know, it's like so much going on, and like it's kind of like um, when you uh open up a bunch of tabs of like YouTube or whatever, and they got a bunch of things going at once. It's kind of like interesting. Even by that standard, it's not good. I don't know what I was saying about that, but, like, I'm, I'm trying to say, like, sometimes a book can have a lot going on and still be interesting because they're able to tie everything together. This, I don't even know. It was boring. Absolutely boring. Thank God it was only four issues. I felt like it was ten issues. Terrible. Then we got Miles Morales, and this one was mostly... <laughs> the Wolverine and the Hulk one were the only ones that were decent. And that's decent in the... Pure definition of the word, like decent as an okay, it's passable. It's another Marvel, and it's another Marvel book. I'm saying MCU. It's another Marvel book. All the others are terrible. The Thor one was just as awful as everyone, everyone is saying it as it is. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Worst Miles to Miles book I've ever read. And this is what this is what we're doing with What If now. This, 
Not a seagull with a spider shadow. Not anything else. There's so many different what ifs they could have done. Even with Miles Morales. Maybe follow up on that Venom thing from Absolute Carnage. I wouldn't care. That'd be awesome. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that I have... I'm pretty sure I do. I was gonna make sure I have everything stacked right. Yeah, I do. Okay. And I know I do, because I was... Alright. Next up, we have the book tour. Kind of mixed on this one. It's mostly good, but pretty monotonous. Kind of reminded me of the book you'd be forced to read in school, like, as a kind of a fun kind of book. It's like, oh, it's a, it's a graphic novel. Look at the artwork. It's like a car it's like a cartoon. Cool. A Sunday strip, specifically. Um, but comic strip, I should have said. And this was, it was pretty good. It's pretty interesting. It's a it's, it's, it's more interesting, interesting towards the end. A a Andy Watson isn't the author, and it's actually he, not she. I found it out at the end of this book. Um... But I thought it was, it was Andy, you know, and so what they spelled Andy, do A, -A N D Y, yet. I don't know what their parents were thinking. Anyways, um, and they thought it was a girl. I don't know. But, anyways, or he was a girl. Um, like, you know, and they'd be like, oh, I want a girl, so we'll name her Andy. And if there's a boy, we'll name Andy, then they. You know, that doesn't make any sense. But, anyways, this book was pretty good. I, I wouldn't recommend it, though. I mean, unless you like these kinds of books. But I don't think any of you guys would. Check it out if you want to. I still, I still liked it, but it wasn't, like, an absolutely need-to-must-read kind of thing, you know? I, I think they could have cut, I also could have cut, like, a hundred pages from this book. I, I, I would like a lot more. I'll be, now on to the good. And so, so, that was more mixed. But now on to the really good, then the good, then some are good, some are great. No, it's all books I like, all books I recommend. Starting with All the Normal, the best volume thus far. Gets really interesting towards the end. I hope they have volume 4 on intro loans. The G Milk's one seems to be like an issue 4, not volume 4. I hope you guys know the difference just in case. This, let's say this is issue 4. This is an issue, this is a book. Not the best comparison, this is one smaller, but. So yeah, that's what we'll get from the library today. I don't know yet, but hopefully I can get volume 4, and hopefully it's the last one, or they have volume 5. That's, that's a such, a, such an interesting series. If your kid is getting into comics, put, put, put them on that. Especially if they like Fairly Odd Parents. It's very, very similar to Fairly Odd Parents without being a carbon copy, of course. Shutter Volume 3. I'm sorry, no, Shutter Volume 2. This was pretty good. Still, um, it's, it, yeah, this is pretty good. It's just good. It's just, it's, it's a good book. It's not passable. It's above passable, but not as good as great. It's kind of like a 6 out of 10 kind of book. It's a get it at a discount or your, or your local library or at a good price by all five, like for like 50 bucks. I would say it's a good price for them for all five volumes, which is a liquid price. So that there you go. Um, I do recommend it. Check it out if you want to. They have a first volume for free on Prime Reading. It's good enough. Not as good as Saga, obviously, but much better than it doesn't have any right to be. Copperhead gets my highest recommendation. Technically, I don't like to do my highest recommendation lock of the week, pick of the week for books I've already read before, because most of the time I, I feel the same exact ways I did before. Um, but this is absolutely spectacular. Read this if you have not read it. It's this. This is good sci-fi. Steve Orlando, take notes. I cannot believe this book is in my recommended, but Moonstruck. Now, if you like this kind of book, you'll like this kind of book. Volumes 1 and 2 were super annoying, especially that first issue. And again, this was why, this is also why I was like, well, maybe I should get the, uh, you know, the more, like, different kind of authors kind of thing, the Alec Cotts and the C. Orlando's, because of this book, I like this book, but I like those, because you have a pretty open mind for comics, and you're just not to be always listening to these guys or those guys, you know, for your own opinion, kind of thing. Um, even though... I know I won't like, and even though some of those I know I probably wouldn't like to ha to own it or what, but yeah, maybe I will. I don't know. Again, I'm very undecided. But this one, I actually really liked. And so much so but that when I found out that, that it kind of in like, cliffhanger, there was no volume four, or at least not solicited for a while, and I was kind of disappointed. Honestly, get a volume four out there. I don't think it's going to kill anyone to get, to get a volume four out there to wrap everything up. Generation Gone by Ellie Cott. Pretty good, very boring towards the start, but it, it picks up and it gets really interesting. But I can't say that this is the new, next new big author. Ellie Cott is not going to be the next new big author because of this book. Just, it's pretty, pretty good. I, I would say check it out. At a discount, obviously. Uh, Vindication was mostly good. I like what they did with the villain. They make him not sympathetic, but understandable. He does very bad things, 
but at least you'll understand where he's coming from. And you seem like, it almost seems like even he regrets what he did. And there is a, so, so much, so many ways this book could have gone, and I'm glad that it went to none of those directions. However, it's at the cost of the story being pretty, like, you know, by the books. You, you know what's going to happen at the end, but it's still interesting enough, I would say, to warrant a read through. How much is it? Uh, 12, yeah, 12 minutes. 1299. If anything, let, let's support a 1299 uh, volumes of image books. That shouldn't, that shouldn't, that's, because that's four issues. That should only be 12, 1299. No matter what year it is. I don't care if that book came out five years ago or ten years ago. It should always be 12, 1299. Uh, no Mercy volume. And this one collected five through nine. I was, I thought it was five through eight. Uh, no, sorry. It's, yeah, five through eight. No, wait. Was it? Yeah, five through, five through nine. Yes, you're five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then nine, so it was five issues. Anyways, very, very, very good. This is absolutely spectacular. This is Alex DeCambio's best book, honestly, I, I feel. I feel, like I, I feel like I can say that without uh, ex exaggeration. Check this book out right now. The first, last issue of that book was pretty depressing. It is definitely a darker towards, darker towards book. It is definitely a darker kind of book, but there also is a lot of, like, uh, comedy and, you know, like, like a bit more lighthearted stuff. It's not super dark. It's not, it's not DCEU kind of stuff, like Batman vs. Superman, and it's not that dark, but it's kind of, like, still pretty dark. Darker than I thought it would be going in. Uh, Purdy. Pretty good. Uh, just as good as Volume 1. And again, it's that artwork. I don't know if I showed the artwork last time, but I'm going to show it again. And this here. This it reminded me a lot of the Headlopper artwork from uh, Andrew McClellan. But very interesting. It's a nice little Western book. It's not anything, yeah, not anything spectacular. It's not going to break the mold, not going to break new ground, but it's interesting enough. And honestly, a book this thick, this was why this thick for twenty four ninety nine, you can't go wrong. Next up, we have Sandman by Neil Gaiman. Pretty good. There was only one issue I liked in this book, though. But I'm still, I'm still in a good section because not only was I, that issue was pretty good, the president one, it's the president one, the president one. Because uh, they'll tell stories. And then the first one was pretty good. This first one, the first issue starts out pretty interesting. I kind of wish we had followed those characters a bit more. Or it was just like, I don't know. But still pretty good. Anyway, the, all, all the other reason why this is on my good section is because it's volume 8. I'm not going to say, oh, volume eight's bad. But volume 10, that's pretty good. But volume 11, that's, you no, know, it's always going to be good because I always liked Salmon. And again, I've gotten so into Salmon now. Which took a long time for me to get into. A long, long time. Cannot believe I'm saying this, but Teen Titans Adam Glass is pretty damn good. Not as good as ben Benjamin Percy's run, but better than it had any right to be. And it actually makes a, lo a crush interesting, Lobo's daughter. I always thought I always thought Crush and Lobo was her first appearance. It's not. Or DC Pride. It's not. Uh, Green Arrow. If anything, I thought it was DC Pride. Uh, Green Arrow by Benjamin Percy, Volume 3. Finally getting out of the preachy shit and getting into the good shit. Wonder Woman, Volume 6, Bones. Damn good run. Check out this run right now. The Omnibus is coming out. If you like your Omnibuses, if you like your books in Omnibus, your DC books in Omnibus form, wait for the Omnibus. If not, get it on digital. Get it anywhere you, any, anywhere you can. But ASAP. Fantastic run. Super underrated. No one talks about it anymore, and it's really annoying. I, I honestly, it's so much so that I kind of feel like George Perez's run is a bit not overrated, but not overhyped, but talk about it too much. Like, talk so much about George Perez's run, but talking nothing about Brian Azzarello's run? That is fucking insane. That should be, if you're a Wonder Woman fan, you should have already read Brian Azzarello's run, is what I'm saying. Not that, oh, they're not a Wonder Woman fan if you haven't read this. No, just like, you, you can't, you have to be, you have to be, to be a super fan now. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm basically I'm saying, if you're a Wonder Woman fan, check it out, obviously. Alright, Seven Soldiers of Victory, Volume 3. I've read this before. It's just as good as I remember it being. Not every story is good because it's a bunch of like anthology stories, but most of them are really good. I, I like the bullet tier one and the King Arthur one the most. And this next book gets my highest recommendation possible. DC Universe by Neil Gaiman. The Green Arrow Superman... Not Green Arrow. The Green Lantern Superman book was absolutely spectacular. I did not read the Wednesday Comics one. I, I had read the black and white and stolen one before, but the the Wednesday Comics one I was kind of like kind of like pessimistic that like I won't my, my library doesn't have all of Wednesday Comics. I'm not reading this one. So 
technically I didn't read that one. Well, I didn't read that one. So technically, but it's like five pages, so it's whatever. But every the, the first one was, and honestly, all, all these are pretty interesting. Uh, the first two were like were very older, like old, like they're like they're late eighties, but they're still pretty good. But it's all it's worth it for the for everything else. And if you have the Caped Crusader trade, you really only need to get the um the Green Lantern Superman book. This has everything in it, basic. It has everything in it that's in the Caped Crusader book. So it's thirty bucks. It's worth every penny. Get this instead of Caped Crusader. Honestly, it has more in here and better and a better story too. Not better story, but because I I, I I loved Caped Crusader too. That's what I'm saying. That's why that's my lock of the week along with the Green Lantern one. But I'm saying it's a better buy than getting the Whatever happened to Bruce Wayne one, Cape Crusader one by Neil Gaiman. Princeless, it gets really interesting. It's a this this is what I this is the what kids books should be. Kids comics should be just as good for for adults as it is for kids. Deadpool Illustrated. Uh, I was gonna review it along with Deadpool kills Deadpool, but no. Uh, worthy follow worthy follow up to uh, Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe. If you like that? You like this? Star Wars. I'm gonna read these to the same time. There's a reason why we got an omnibus of Star Wars by Jason Aaron and Doctor Aphra by Kieran Gill, or just Doctor Aphra in general, because these are these are worth it. Oh, are worthy of an omnibus, which we already got. I'm saying, you know what I'm trying to say. Damn good books. Check them out. Ms. Marvel Civil War 2. I know. I'm probably the only one that likes this series, but I can't. I, I still recommend it. And then again, this is another thing where I'm like, well, maybe you should get this. The uh, Steve Orlando books and the LA Cards one that, that, that run. Cause, uh, you know, it's, again, like I said before, it's authors that some of them I do kind of, kind of like. And even though some of them are like ones I don't know as much, I know these guys. They're still, you know, it's whole, like, I like them, no one else does, but that's still my opinion, but, I mean, like, I like Cotton, like, a huge fan of, as much as the other set of books I'm getting, so, you know, because the other set of books is, like, like, Hickman stuff, you know, and to, to not, to not get Hickman books from Image, instead of, and to get, like, Alex the Camp, not Alex the Camp, yeah, to get, uh, like, Man Eaters and Ellie Cobb books instead of the Jonathan Hickman books, that's, like, no. And sci-fi too, so yeah, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna take those books out, honestly, if anything. But anyways, Ms. Marvel, it's still pretty good, honestly. Because I can still do like the, I can still check out the books I want to check out. I don't like I, it's not, if anything, it's. No. But anyways, Deadpool kills Deadpool, worthy finale to that series. Put that there, so pile it with the library books. Ant Man by Zeb Wells. Pretty good. I I get to read the Ant Man Ant Man run that's as good as uh, Nick Spencer's one was. And even that volume one was pretty boring. Ant Man Ant Man for, Ant-Man for me, I think in comic form, and kind of in movie form, is kind of like, all right. E- even the Nick Spencer one, I wasn't super crazy about. It just got pretty interesting, and that was about. It was just kind of it, was, it kept my interest. It was better than volume one was for whatever reason. Like, it, was, it was a five issue mini series, and then it got some going. Young Avengers. Absolutely spectacular run. I have read this before, so I'm not gonna do the block of the week or anything like that for that because that's my that's one rule. No matter how much you know, unless it's a book I hate, absolutely hate, but I always love this book and I love it even more now. Damn good run. Then we got the last two, and that's 1602 by Neil Gaiman and 1602 the sequel by Pierre David and Greg Pak, which is New World by Greg Pak and Fantastic, like actually a stick, like a you know throw a stick at a dog, for. Um, by Peter David, and I cannot believe I'm saying this. Well, I, I said it last time. Now I'm, I'm gonna read this a bit differently. If you like your books that are more poetic, like Neil Gaiman, if you're a Neil Gaiman fan, huge Neil Gaiman fan, you'll like Six Zero Two more than you do like than than this. But if you like your books, like if you want to see a sixteen Six Zero Two world in a cool way, and you can you get some of that in Six Zero Two, but by Neil Gaiman, it's a lot of poetic, a lot of like dialogue heavy. But this is action heavy. So, you know, it's kind of like, pick your poison. But you do have to read the Neil Gaiman run before you read this one. So, either way, I gotta read this. But it's not too bad, honestly. But that, as they say, is that. 24 minutes. Not bad. Hey, I went, I went over 25 plus books in 25, not even 25 minutes, alright? The end. <laughs>